Okay, so hey you guys, it's Purcell here, and I'm here for the next F1 Manager episode, where we're going to be at the Austrian Grand Prix. Yes, we are actually at the um, Austrian Grand Prix, the A1 ring, um, which later became the Red Bull ring, and it's brilliant actually, considering Red Bull are one of our two um, title sponsors, our two main sponsors, obviously, alongside PlayStation. So it's going to be an interesting race for Red Bull, because it's their home race, and later actually became, you know, a track they owned. Um, and now a couple of things I want to say is, um, well, two things really. One, I am planning to do this series fortnightly for a while, because before I've been doing it pretty much weekly, pretty much every week since about January. Um, and now I think I'm going to do it fortnightly, because there's lots of other series and lots of other videos I want to do, and doing this weekly kind of compromises the amount of other videos I can do, because obviously I'm doing F1 2015 videos, um, I'm doing, I plan to do lots of one-off videos, you will have seen PSL plays on GTA Vice City, um, assuming you watched it of course, um, and a couple of other videos, I'm thinking about bringing back the Reverse Grid Race series for F1 Championship Edition, and basically, I think this series is going to have to um, become fortnightly to allow me to do those. Um, but anyway, yeah, and the second thing I want to say is I'm going to announce, I've decided, because a few people suggesting this in the comments, I'm going to announce my drivers at the, um, just before the Italian Grand Prix, obviously, because it's Minardi's home Grand Prix. And I think, yeah, we'll announce uh, Minardi's drivers then. So, basically, that's that. And let's just head on to the news. See if we get any um, amazing news. Well, the, the thing is, though, is at this point in the season, a lot of news has already... Well, a lot of contracts next year have already been announced. And B.A.R. for Patrick Lemar as driver 2. Oh, okay. Now this is an interesting move actually, Patrick Lemary at the minute is currently Prost test driver um, and to all intents and purposes BAR seems to have replaced one rubbish driver, obviously Laurent Radon, um, with another potentially rubbish rookie driver because we've seen the rookie drivers we've seen this year, Laurent Radon and um, Neil McEwen, they really haven't performed and I don't know whether Patrick Lemary is going to be any different but you'd hope so because BAR you know, it's a gamble, definitely, it's a gamble to get Patrick Lemery. Um, yeah, and then the rest are just sponsor news, okay. So yeah, so we got a, oh, statement from Stuart. Stuart have announced Leo Ress as their technical director. We obviously, he's currently, well, he's still at Stuart, so he's going to be staying with Stuart GP next year, which is brilliant for the team. I mean, Leo Rest can't be doing that bad of a job, and I know for a fact he's not one of the worst technical directors. So, it's, it's an interesting move for Stuart, really. You know, I mean, one of the few times where... Because normally teams change personnel every year. It's not that common where um, they maintain the same person, but Stuart seemed to be doing that. Although, Mikasalo, I'm sorry, he's going. I'm so sorry. He's been brilliant this season. I'm not going to deny, but... Unfortunately, I arranged the contracts for next year um, right at the start of the season before I actually ever saw how good Mikasalo was. I'm not saying I regret it because I know for a fact the drivers we got for next year are brilliant, but Mikasalo, he's been brilliant for us. Got Minardi's first win, and I will miss him. Definitely, he definitely deserves a place at a good team. I don't know whether Stuart will be good next year. I don't think they're going to be quite in a race winning position like we have been, but. It's a sad day to see Mikasalo go. He's been, he's done so well for us, and I'm, we're going to recap how well his career's been in the season two montage when I eventually get around to doing that at the end of the season. But Mikasalo, he's had his time. He's still going to have lots more opportunity in the next six races to do brilliant things for us. But I, did, I never realised how good he would be, and I know for a fact um, next year's driver number two, which should be, should definitely has proven to be as good as him, but. It's a sad day for Mikasalo, but at least we've we've taken his career from being nothing because he was uncontracted in '99. Well, obviously, in real life, '99 he replaced Schumacher, but in this game he was uncontracted. We have now picked him up, jump started his career as he's gone from Minardi and now to Stewart next year as driver two. So I, I feel great. We've jump started Salo's career, and that's brilliant to see. And obviously, he's got an email telling us he's left us. Well, he's, he will be leaving us at the end of the year. And, yeah, it's, it's, 
Yeah, and he says, yeah, he says he'd like to take this opportunity to thank myself and everyone else on the team. And yeah, that's really, he's leaving a good grace and really, you know, what can I say? Jordan confirms Loic Bigoy, okay, as their chief designer. Ooh, now this is interesting. So they're not retaining Rory Brin. I can't remember if Rory Brin is going to someone else. I can't remember. Oh, so you guys can check in the description whether Roy Brin's already contracted to go to another team. I can't remember off the top of my head, but the fact Jordan aren't keeping Roy Brin is very interesting, actually. Why aren't they keeping him? I mean, he's the joint best designer on the game, and... Interesting move there. Um, yeah. Okay. That's interesting news. Already interesting announcements. Um, no news then, okay, just some emails from our guys, just weekly reports, which probably tell us nothing interesting. Jordan, oh, Jordan confirms Pedro De La Rosa is driver number two. Okay, so the Arrows, I was going to say the Arrows star, but I mean, he's done as well as he can do realistically in the Arrows. Um, going to Jordan, wow, well, Jordan clearly sees some potential in um, De La Rosa. That's an interesting one, so... Jordan, I mean, they could well be a threat next year. Obviously, they will have a Roy Brin chassis, so they're definitely not to be messed with. But they're driving number one's Trulli, and driver two's De La Rosa. Uh, okay. I think highly of Trulli. I don't think too highly of De La Rosa. Not as bad as um, Patrick Lamarie, who we've seen um, confirm this episode. Although, I mean, Lamarie may be, you know, a, a, an unseen star that BAR have picked up. But I don't know. Delos is a safe pair of hands, really. He's not going to do anything amazing, but he is a safe pair of hands for Jordan. A, a solid driver, too, I suppose. He, he'll take the car home and he'll back up, truly. Um, not as in literally back him up on the track. I mean, you know, he'll have his back and help him out, I suppose. Um, Magneti Morelli is announced a sick model of electronics and AP, the sick model of brakes. Okay, so that's the best brakes and electronics we're going to be getting because they are rated, yeah, 99 of the current ones. A hundred, uh, yeah, they're rated a hundred. The, um, these next model of brakes and electronics, so they're perfect. Obviously, we had a hundred rated Magneti Morelli electronics last year, but this is the first time we're going to have um, brakes that are rated a hundred. So that's brilliant, actually. Um, that's why you pick good supplies because they give you good parts and a lot of them. Thirty-five brakes. We've only got six races left. Wow. I mean, that's it. Oh, wow. I was about to click to, uh, to race. Wow, that's done already. They're re well, and it's the fact that lots of announcements have already been made so far this season. As well as the fact that... Um, I forgot to give some give Fraser some assistance. Okay. Yeah, it's mixed with the fact that lots of announcements have already made this season so far. As well as the fact that really, you know, there's, there's not a lot, you know... I, I don't really know what I was going to say, but yeah, lots of answers have already been made, so there's not that many left to come. Anyway, A1 Ring, I've already said that it's going to be a special Grand Prix. It's our title sponsors, home race, as well as, you know, in the future track they own. High speed track should pay, um, should play to the Mercedes Benz engine advantage. Obviously, you know, we've got a power advantage over the rest of the field. So, with this track being, you know, high speed in its nature, we should actually contending for podiums, you know, and if Schumacher retires, maybe even a win, I really would be surprised if we're not up in the top three. Um, but anyway, let's, so let's just see how this race goes with either anything interesting in practice or the quality report. Okay, our pace isn't actually as electric as I thought it would be. Um, down in 8th and 11th, and I know for a fact there's more pace to come from the car because we... Um, we actually need to do light fuel loads because we actually um, went out on heavy fuel because I forgot to change it. Um, and we need to set laps on push and risk everything. So there's definitely more time to come out. But really, I think headlines, Neil McEwen's actually set a decent lap for once. Well, I mean, I mean not for once, I mean, he has done a few times, but he's actually able to put it second, um, which, you know, isn't that common from him. Um, Williams are back on form. Obviously, we've seen them. We They dropped down quite a bit, actually, in the past few races. I think ever since Monaco, no. Well, Monaco, they, I know they weren't good, but I know a few races recently, they have just slipped down the field, but they're back in form. Schumacher, well, Ralph Schumacher, fourth, Takaki in seventh. 
Um, McLaren, despite their power disadvantage, seems to have made the most of it. Fizzy Keller third, Herbert fifth. And I know for a fact there's McLaren making the best of a bad situation. Because if you look at Jordan, who Jordan, weirdly, I still don't understand how, but Jordan seems to have, for the most part, outperformed McLaren. But this time, Jordan down in ninth and 13th. So, really, um, our scrap with Jordan continues. And also, McLaren, for... Like, I think for the first time this season, they've actually outpaced Jordan, which they should do, because obviously they've got the same engine, similar level drivers, but McLaren have a better chassis. they still got a Neil Oatley chassis. Finally been able to work for them, but anyway, um, you know, practice is kind of irrelevant. Let's go on to where it really matters, which is qualifying, so I'll take you to the qualifying report now. So the qualifying for the 2000 Austrian Grand Prix around the A1 ring has just ended and there are a few interesting results here so it's definitely worth a look. So for the 10th time in 10 races this season Michael Schumacher has taken pole once again a good 2.5 seconds ahead of his teammate Neil McEwen in second. But really this does seem like Ferrari dominance obviously with no one being able to touch Michael Schumacher on pace and with Neil McEwen stringing together a good lap in qualifying and in practice we could see a Ferrari 1-2 which hasn't happened at all this season because Neil McEwen over the course of the previous 9 rounds has only scored 2 points in comparison to Michael Schumacher's 61. The other Schumacher, Ralph Schumacher, is in third in the Williams, showing that Williams has found its former pace which it had previously in the season, then lost, but has now regained, as Ralph Schumacher takes his place as being the best of the rest, and lining up directly behind his brother. Although his lap time was still a full second behind Neil McEwen's, and three and a half seconds behind his brother Michael Schumacher's. Mika Salo in the Minardi, which has the closest connection to a home race, with one of Minardi's title sponsors, Red Bull, being based in Austria, meant that Mika Salo has actually found some decent pace this race, as he's able to qualify fourth. Giancarlo Fisichella is fifth in the McLaren, which, despite using Ford Z-Tech engines, is able to utilise the McLaren's brilliant aerodynamics and chassis, with Fisichella able to haul the car in fifth. David Coulthard qualifies a very respectable 6th place in the Benetton, sandwiched between the two McLarens. So as just mentioned, Johnny Herbert is 7th in the other McLaren, just behind David Coulthard, and will line up directly behind his teammate Fizzy Keller. Jean Lacey is 8th in the other Benetton, with Damon Hill 9th in the Minardi. A very shocking performance for Damon Hill, although he did crash out on his Risk Everything lap. Although his quickest lap time was a second slower than Mika Salo's, Damon Hill wasn't able to set a risk everything lap, so there is definitely more pace to come from Damon Hill, and we definitely shouldn't write him off yet. Takaki lines up just behind in 10th, with Barrichello and Frentzen, the two Jordans, qualifying much slower down than they have done in the season in 11th and 12th. They're followed by both Stewarts of Eddie Irvine on top, and both BARs with amazingly Laurent Radon on top of the former champion Jacques Villeneuve. Ricardo Zonta is 17th in the Prost with Vert 18th. Pedro Diniz is 19th. De La Rosa out qualifies Zanardi in the Sauber and there is maybe linked to how Zanardi really has underperformed ever since 1999 but also how De La Rosa has now been confirmed to be with Jordan next year and maybe it's that morale boost that has pulled him ahead of a Sauber of Zanardi, but not only has it put him ahead of Zanardi, it's also put him nearly 6 seconds a lap clear of his teammate Marc Genet. Now Marc Genet most of the time hasn't been quicker than De La Rosa, but there has never been such a golf in lap time. As it does show De La Rosa making the most of a bad car, Jordan could be in for a very good driver next year. Okay, so that was a qualifying report with some very interesting results as well. Apart from, obviously, um, Schumacher's pole position, which really wasn't surprising. But Damon Hill crashing out, sure, on a risk everything lap, but Damon Hill crashing out, which we haven't seen that often from either of our drivers, is a worry for this race, and I'm sure a worry for Red Bull. But um, Mike Gascoigne is predicting a one-stop strategy. Obviously, I've calculated the fuel out myself, but we still need Gascoigne to work out what stop strategy to do. And I've worked out the fuel myself, Mick is pitting in a lap later, I shall do an extra litre of fuel. 
I always put a few litres extra just to be safe. But anyway, let's head on to the race. I had a terrible thought in my head then that um that I forgot to replace the parts on the cars, but I, I did, definitely. But Damon Hill went ninth, just ahead of Takaki, actually, which is... I, I don't know. I, and none of the cars are properly in their grid slots. They were all kind of to the right. Um, a replay. Is this McEwen, Is this Neil McEwen getting past Bra uh, Michael Schumacher at the start? It happened in Australia and it was the best thing in the world. Um, can't really see. I don't know why they showed the replay at the start when nothing had really happened. Um, there's a BAR getting past a Stewart there. That could be Laurent Verdon. Obviously, Laurent Verdon qualifying amazingly well. Um, and actually, I think Ralph Schumacher has got past Neil McEwen. And it appears that Ralph Schumacher has actually made a place on um, Neil McEwen. So Neil McEwen already has slipped down the field and it's inevitable from him. Despite having by far what is a dominant car. He's slipping down the field majorly. And Nick McEwen actually looks like he's under threat from Mikasalo there. Is he? Is Mikasalo going to make a move? No, he actually, Neil McEwen... Hang on, sorry, what? Is it just... So there was a replay that was ahead of time. How can you have a replay that happened before the actual event happened? Oh, this game, this I love this game. It's so it's so glitchy, I love it. Um Did Neil McEwen pass Ralph Schumacher? I mean that's kind of the only thing I care about. Actually De La Rosa is holding up De La Rosa's got past both pros actually. De La Rosa's made a very good start there. Brilliant qualifying. I mean, to finish just shy of six seconds ahead of your teammate is you know it's unheard of. Ralph Schumacher actually is still in second. Neil McEwen has dropped that back a lot, and actually with him only having a Ferrari engine and Mikasalo being a superb driver, I don't see how Neil McEwen can hold that third place for much longer, unless he suddenly finds a turn of speed, which he had in qualifying and practice, well, getting second at least, but it'd be difficult for any, uh, for any driver to out-qualify Michael Schumacher, let alone a former EA employee on his rookie season. Um, oh, a replay, let's just see... This is interesting. This is Damon Hill. Actually, Takaki got past Damon Hill. I don't know whether that that shows that Damon Hill is a bad driver or Takaki is a good one, but really, that is shocking for Damon Hill to be behind Taka uh, Takaki. I mean, we know that the Williams is a quick car, but still. Um, Damon Hill is moving up positions, and so is Takaki. Um, okay, let's just... Let's just wait for the for laps to tick by, and then there won't be so many position changes. And Coulthard's got passed, but Coulthard really, I think he's I think Coulthard is second in the drivers' title. And when you look at his race results, he has been very solid actually. I'd say uh, he he's not the best of the rest because that is Ralph Schumacher. Well, in terms of quickest of the rest, it's Ralph Schumacher. But actually, Coulthard is just behind him. Really, he's found. Pace in the Benetton, which John Alesi hasn't, although having said that, John Alesi is still in sixth. But David Coulthard has been has done very well. Another retirement for a McLaren. That is uh, Johnny Herbert with a driver error, and that's. There's been so many driver errors now. I'm. I'm trying to work out whether it is the car because the majority of the time it has been Johnny Herbert. I mean, Fizzy Keller has also had some, but I don't know. It might. B, just Herbert, I don't know, I don't really quite know what's going on at McLaren. I mean, they've found, they've had a lack of pace, which has been weird. They've, oh, there's been all sorts of troubles at McLaren. Um, Salah's still holding fourth, and actually, I would happily settle for fourth, because we know we're not going to outpace Ralph Schumacher, and it would be a bit of a struggle to outpace Coulthard. So, really, uh, Michael Schumacher is out with a driver error. Oh, okay, this race win is actually... I actually said if, Ma if Michael Schumacher retires, we could challenge for a race win. We definitely could, right? While we're at it, we're going to get Damon Hill to push because he's not even in the points places. And actually, he's still a ninth. Okay, so if... Oh, whatever. David Coulthard, 11 seconds ahead. Okay. Um, there's... Yeah, there's Coulthard and there is, um, Schumacher. Okay, well, we could... Get a race win. Unlike, you know, when Schumacher's leading, it's impossible. When someone else is leading, it's plausible. Um, what's that David Coulthard out of a driver error? Oh, wow. Now this, this, oh. 
Okay. Um. Right, we're not going to outpace Ralph Schumacher. D Damon Hill's retired. A driver error. Damon Hill has not been suited to this track. Damon Hill has retired. Crashed out in qualifying and now he's retired here and really... Damon Hill has really not lived up to my expectations. We're getting towards that point of the season where I think I can actually make a fair judgement. And Damon Hill has not lived up to expectations. A former world champion but really has not done well here. Mika Salo, on the other hand is in second. And we're not going to outpace Ralph Schumacher. So there's no point pushing to try and catch up. We're just going to have to hope he retires. Uh, oh, oh that, that scared the hell out of me. That's just a pit stop. Strategy. Um, Takaki's jumped us. Yeah, Takaki's now going to pits. Okay, Neil McEwen has passed as well. McEwen, I mean, one minute, Neil McEwen's uh, the quickest guy in the field, and then the next minute, he's down in 18th. So, it's difficult to save him. Laurent Redon's out of a bargeable failure. Okay. Oh, the thing I think is interesting is the number of big-name drivers who have um, had driver errors here. Uh, David Coulthard has. Uh, Michael Schumacher has. Johnny Herbert has. Even Mark Genet has. What is going on? And Bab Keller is worryingly in second. He's come from nowhere. I'm I was assuming he's going to make a pit stop, but it doesn't look like he's going to. And I think if... We, well, we'll leave it a bit longer, and if nothing happens, I think we're going to have to turn to push. Meanwhile, uh, Heinz Al Frentzen's had a driver error. Eddie Irvine and the Stewarts had an engine failure. Okay. What about the other Stewart? Oh, no, of course, truly had a... Um, thingy failure ages ago, tyre failure, now we're ahead of Neil McEwen. I thought that was a retirement. Uh, John Lacey's got past this. No, 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 I won't sell for John Lacey. John Lacey's a good driver, but he hasn't quite lived up to David Coulthard's pace. Back past John Lacey, okay, John Lacey's dropped down then. What happened there? Wow. Did he retire? Did he actually retire? Because something happened there. Yeah, he did tyre failure, wow. Two tyre failures, that doesn't... Tyre failures don't happen often, but there's been two of them. Okay, Bruins Barrichello. Now, we know in Imola, Barrichello was faster than Salo, but since then, we've used a proper fuel strategy. We've got better brakes, aero parts, electronics, and engine. So, why no comparatively, we definitely have a better engine, so we should be able to match on pace. Now, I'm going to risk it and actually push for the rest of the race. Now, this is a massive gamble, but we could get second place. And actually, Neil McEwen is lurking around behind us. Neil McEwen has actually had a very strong race, and actually, this could be his best finish in Formula 1 if he can stay there. Now, I am wary of a driver error. We are catch up to Bruins Barrichello, but not quick enough. And I think Mel Schumacher is actually going to win. Uh, no, we're not catching up quick enough. We're just not, although actually that is the hours of Della Rosa and maybe De La Rosa could hold up. I'm going to risk it and put Salo on, on risk everything for the next two laps. I doubt he's going to retire in those two laps and if he does then so be it. Because, um, oh no, we're, there's no point. Oh, Neil McEwen's dropped down. Okay, okay, Takaki's got past Neil McEwen. That is commendable, actually. Raul Schumacher's won. Okay, that is that is unexpected for Ralph Schumacher and his um just him really. Um but uh we're looking like we could get Minardi's second ever podium. Uh Barrichello, let's just see Barrichello. Is he gonna take second place? Is he gonna have a last corner retirement? Let's see. So ruins Barrichello is coming round the second class corner and no I don't think so. Is the Ford C-Tech engine just going to give up here? And it's not, because he's on the home straight. He could crash off and he'll still probably cross the line. There you go. Mikasalo in third. The Red Bull's going to be happy with that. Mikasalo's going to be happy with that. Stewart going to be happy with that to see, their for, uh, to, to see their future driver get third. And really, I don't really care about anything else. Oh, Takaki, actually. Let's watch Takaki. Is he already finished? He's coming around the last corner quick. There's Takaki. And he's going to get fourth. Very commendable for Takaki there. And that just leaves Neil McEwen in 5th and Jacques Villeneuve in 6th. Okay, so Neil McEwen has equaled his best ever finish in Formula 1. Because he got a 5th place... Was it Australia? It was near the start of the season. And he's got that again. Outscores teammates. Um, so... Wow. 
That's an interesting race. Williams have outscored us in terms of constructors, and so have Jordan. But if you look at McLaren, we've outscored them. If you look at Benetton, we've outscored them. So it's been a mixed day in terms of constructors, but third place. Minardi's second ever podium. That is brilliant for us and for Mikasalo. And well, okay. And Mikasalo was actually... I don't know, well, anyway, fourth quickest in terms of fastest lap set, but David Coulthard was quicker than us. Okay, well, anyway, let's just continue on. And lots of big-name driver retirements there. Driver errors. Fizzy Keller was actually someone who had a driver error retirement as well. So, really, I don't know what happened. This track, I don't think it was that difficult of a track, but it seemed to be. Anyway, well, Schumacher wins. Obviously, the Williams definitely... As in real life 2015, um, the Williams does actually seem to be suited to um, high speed tracks because they really excelled here. But in other tracks that we've been to previously, they've just been nowhere. So Williams has been, it's been all over the place really in terms of its pace. Mike Gascoigne, you'll not say anything interesting. Lee Lotley. Yeah, will Jordan have a most advanced barge boards? Okay. Although they do have Roy Brin on the team, so you'd hope. They'd be doing well. 1.2 million prize money. We're doing very well financially. I don't think we've got to worry financially. Um, despite all the expensive engines and stuff we've got. Although our drivers are quite cheap. That's kind of half the reason we got them. Obviously, Owen Green costs us pretty much nothing. Um, so let's look at the driver's title. Sarlo's in third. Actually, Sarlo has just overtaken Coulthard. That is very impressive considering how consistently near the top Coulthard has been. All season, even this race, he was look. He looks set for second place. So Coulthard ahead of Coulthard is, you know, a very big deal. Um, constructors win fourth. Okay, level on points with Jordan, just behind Williams because Williams did very well this race. Um, okay, but we're ahead of Benetton and McLaren. McLaren are just, I don't understand McLaren this season. I really, it's it's been a mystery ever since ever since day one of this season. It's been a mystery why they haven't been. At the very least, quicker than Jordan. I don't get it, but well, they were this race, but then two driver errors kind of screwed them over. And John Todd has really overtaken me as um, number one rated team manager. Last episode ended with me being rated number one. It's now John Todd who's ahead. Uh, Frank Williams not far behind, obviously getting um, a race win for Ralph Schumacher and Takaki in fourth place. Frank Williams has done well. Ron Dennis still rated the worst manager because really, well, as I say, it's been a mystery since the start of the season. Brilliant in 99, dreadful this season. And even in 99, he didn't get rated the highest manager. That was Paul Stewart. I actually, look at Paul Stewart now. Well, Stewart have been nowhere, actually, considering they had such promise, even in pre-season testing. Anyway, um, next race is Germany Hockenheim. Oh, our engine supplies home race. This could be, and obviously, not only is it our en engine supplies home race, it's also uber, uber dependent on straight line speed, and we know for a fact that we are the best in that. Well, Williams seem to be, Williams as a car seems to excel in high speed tracks, but, you know, the, I'm sure the Mercedes Benz power advantage should be able to, you know, outweigh that, considering Williams are only using the Supertech engine. Um, I'm still going to expect a Michael Schumacher win unless there's some retirement from him, like we saw this race. But really, Hockenheim, a race I'm looking forward to. And I think, I think we very nearly actually got points last uh, last time out. Um, I think we finished 8th. I think Padoa finished 8th. Or Genet. One of our drivers finished 8th, because I'm pretty certain a Prost finished 7th, which is a worrying time for us when we were battling directly with the Prost team. So, it's been fairly kind to us before. And now we've got the dominant engine that should be very kind to us. But, then again, this track wasn't too kind. But then again, the podium, I don't know. It's difficult to judge. Let's find out in... Well, the next episode will probably be uploaded in a fortnight, as I said at the start of the episode. But anyway, next race is Hockenheim. So I'll see you guys for that. So I'll see you then.